Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu. Well, welcome once again to Kahului Hanganji Buddhist Temple's online YouTube Sunday service. Today's service is for October 10th, 2021. Um, so glad to have uh, all of our viewers together here virtually um, enjoying uh, a, a, another beautiful day, another wonderful day of life, and uh, taking some time to reflect on uh, what our life, what our life is really uh, about, what why we are really here. Um, so uh, today's service is a regular service. So we have already begun with the Kancho Bell, calling us to mindfully reflect and listen to the Buddha Dharma. Following uh, these opening words, we will have the. Vandana and Tisarana, praising the Buddha and the Buddha's enlightenment, and uh, praise and uh, taking refuge in the in the Buddha, the teacher, the Dharma, the teaching, and the Sangha, the community that we all share together. And uh, after that, we will chant the uh, sutra, the sort of modern sutra called Gasho to Amida. Uh, after that, we will recite the Golden Chain of Love, and then I will share a Dharma message with you. And following the Dharma message, we will uh, chant the metta, the loving kindness meditation, and then sing the nembutsu. And after that, I'll have some closing words and announcements. So thank you once again for being here today. And let's begin our service now by reciting the nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Show to Amida 
trees and grasses and flowers all grow in great compassion. This light shines throughout the world. I go show to Amida. Flowers bloom and flowers fall. From the seed sprout new flowers. This is the truth unchanging. I go show to Amida. Springtime brings the happy birds. Their songs all praise Amida. I join them in Nembutsu. I go show to Amida. When I call Amida's name, it's Amida calling me. Buddha's voice, my voice, are one. I go show to Amida. When I'm lonely, I recite Namo Amida Butsu. Then I feel great compassion. I go show to Amida. Nembutsu in work and play every day with Amida, every moment filled with light. I go show to Amida. Remember the golden chain, kindness to all. Show to Amida in the clear, bright morning sun, in the fading light of day, in the darkness of the night. I go show to Amida Namo Amida Butsu. I live in great compassion. This great power guides my life. I go show to Amida. Golden Chain of Love I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds 
knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Welcome once again. Would you please join me with hands together as I recite one of the poems of Shinran. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, which surpasses all virtues, our heavy obstructions of evil, past, present, and future, are all unfailingly transformed, becoming light. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Well, welcome again, as I said, and uh, at this time I'd like to share some thoughts about the Buddha's teaching with you. So, you know, the quality of life the life it, that we live uh, really depends on our outlook, our, our perception, our point of view. Um, that's our way of seeing and understanding our life. If we view life with anxiety, if we feel that we don't have enough, or that what we have may be lost, we're fearful of losing what we have, if we see life as a problem and continually feel upset, worried, and angry, uh, then our life will tend to be gloomy and sad. On the other hand, if we are able to appreciate each moment of our living without judging whether it's good or bad, happy or unhappy, pleasant or unpleasant, then life will become more harmonious, peaceful and bright, even in the midst of difficulty and suffering. In our modern culture, we have come to emphasize health, youth, beauty, winning, and success, all the things that we want. This emphasis has multiplied since, I think, since the development of the internet and social media, because now everyone is constantly connected to what everyone else has or is doing or claims to have and, and do, and, and where everyone is constantly exposed to the scrutin scrutiny and the judgments of others. Young people especially suffer to maintain what they perceive is the currently accepted look, style, and attitude. But not just young people. The demand for cosmetic surgery continues to grow among all age groups, even in the midst of a pandemic. In fact, the desire to look good during Zoom meetings is one of the driving factors there. How we look, whether we maintain a youthful appearance, uh, how others judge us from the way we look or the way we act, whether we are winners or losers. These are matters of great concern to huge numbers of people. These concerns, though they may have a, a kernel of legitimacy, reveal the emptiness of, of modern life, especially in this digital era. Though, uh, <coughs> through the, uh, though the connectivity and communication provided by the internet can have the effect of deepening our knowledge and understanding and widening our experience of life, its misuse as a tool of manipulation and ego gratification certainly has the opposite effect. Rather than deepen our inner life and our ability to awaken to every aspect of human experience, so much of the online world has become a tool to exploit the weak and vulnerable robbing them of self-worth and purpose and sending them on a downward spiral in their obsessive pursuit of confirmation and approval. All too often, with the mental cruelty that social media has helped, helped many people to refine, condemnation and being canceled is the outcome. Uh, for some, it is a final outcome. Of course, as in all human interaction, Wonder, uh, wonderful, nurturing, supportive, and creative spaces exist on the internet, sometimes in the most unlikely places. Whether we like it or not, we are stuck with this technology, so we need to do our best to make whatever corner of the online world we spend time in a place of love, kindness, and support. Hopefully, human beings will learn how to use uh, these virtual methods of gathering and communicating uh, compassionately and creatively. Buddhism can show us the way. 
in the first place, it can remind us that judgmental thinking and the demeaning of others has no place in any true community. Sharing and mutual guidance are the core of any productive gathering of people, uh, and all human act, uh, excuse me, all human interaction, whether among families, communities, or even nations, needs to have the notion of self of non-discrimination deeply embedded in its shared consciousness. Everyone needs, first and foremost, to accept one another as they are, as we are. Just like Mr. Rogers always told his television neighbors, he said, I like you just the way you are. That's the starting and ending point of every meaningful relationship in life. It doesn't mean we ignore each other's faults. It doesn't mean we don't try to kindly help each other grow and improve as human beings. Of course we do. It does mean that we always remember and never forget the humanity that we all share and the sanctity of every life. In order to understand and appreciate the life we are living, in other words, in order to have true happiness in life, we need to understand the impermanence of all things and the temporary nature of, of any state of being, of every state of being. We see the world in, 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 in two, in dualities, but every duality is really only an expression of wholeness, of oneness. We think that being healthy is better than being sick, or being young is better than being old, but there is no health without sickness no youth without old age, no moment without eternity. Health and sickness are one. Youth and old age are one. Winning and losing are one. Of course, we human beings don't like to be old, so we struggle against it and try to stay young. We don't like to lose, right? We like to win. We, but we know death is inevitable. We know death is part of life, part of being alive, part of being born, means that we, we also die, must die. But we fear death and we try to ignore it. We try to cheat it in many ways, to pretend it doesn't exist. Some people even try to have themselves frozen so they can be reawoke, reawakened sometime later when the technology improves. But it, it, it's, a, it's a kind of a delusion. This moment of life that we're living is our true life. This is what we need to focus on and hold on to. As the Buddha taught, life and death simply cannot be se separated. To be young means that we grow old. Th th this is the process of living. And to live means that we are constantly learning, constantly encountering the true nature of things. We're always growing. We're always changing. We're always being transformed. Although we might prefer to be healthy and rich, living teaches us that these are only changing conditions. When we live with this awareness, the awareness that the Dharma brings us, the Buddhist teaching brings us, we are able to appreciate every moment as a reflection of this e eternal process, this eternal process of dynamic change. Buddhism teaches us that everything arises Everything comes into being because of causes and conditions. When those conditions change, things change, we change. But we do not need to fear this process. Instead, we need to embrace this change because it is only through realizing the, the certainty of change and thus the impermanence of all things that we can awaken to what is really going on in our lives at this present moment, at each and every moment of our living. So it's very important for all of us to be aware of this reality and not fragment the world into these dichotomies, life, death, good, bad, pleasant, unpleasant, young, old. The founder of the Jodo Shinshu teaching, Shinran Shonin, taught that Amida Buddha, who represents limitless compassion and wisdom, the oneness of life, the totality of life, which encompasses all these dichotomies, all these dualities. Uh, he, uh, he taught that uh, Amida, uh, Amida Buddha always embraces everyone just as we are, just as you are, whether, whether good or bad, young or old, wise or foolish, male or female, whatever, whatever 
whatever dichotomy, whatever this and that you can think of, Amida embraces us all as we are. Of course, it's important that we always try our best in this world, not just say, I'm, I'm good enough as I am uh, 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 to ourselves. We try to improve, of course, but we accept ourselves and one another just as we are. Uh, but we, ha we, we, we must never forget that we are limited being, uh, beings and that our, our understanding is, is limited. So our judgment is, is always going to be uh, inaccurate. You know, it's not going to be perfect. We always think that we know what's good. We know the good. I know what's good. I know, what, I know what's better. This is better than that. But, you know, have you, have you ever noticed in your own life that um, our ideas about what is good change throughout our lives? So we may strive. What we strive for when we're young often becomes dissatisfying to us when we get old. Our views and opinions about life constantly change. And we can never say at any point in our life that, you know, I know for certain what is good. It's always tentative. It's always growing, changing, subject to new experiences, new information. Whatever we achieve today may seem foolish tomorrow. What brings happiness today may actually result in, in sadness, in suffering tomorrow. So our human wisdom, our human wisdom, is by definition selfish, self-centered, uh, always concerned with momentary happiness. Our human wisdom is what we think we know, you know, our, our certainties about things, our, our cleverness. Um, but in, in our, that human wisdom is always concerned with you know, what's going to make me happy at this moment, what I think I want, what, uh, what, what I see out there which I think will fulfill me. We might say that the chaotic, conflicted, and con contradictory world of the Internet, which I spoke about earlier, is the world of human wisdom. It's like a manifestation all out there, you know, that we all share now, is a, a manifestation of that human wisdom, that self-centered wisdom, self-centered uh, intelligence. The Buddha taught that we, we, we have a tendency to follow our selfish instincts and interests and attach ourselves to whatever seems good and pleasant in the moment. We want to hold on to everything that makes us feel good and safe uh, very tightly and we think we can keep it forever. This applies to all our opinions and tastes as well as to material things. At the same time, we always resist change and we become disappointed by the very things once we obtain them uh, that we were previously convinced uh, would, were, would make us happy. As soon as we get them, we feel disappointed. It's not enough. It's never enough. Living as we do now, this has never been more obvious. We are you know, very consumer-oriented, so we see something out there um, and a new, new thing or you know, device or whatever comes out and we say, oh, I have to get that. That's so wonderful. You know, or I, I, inevitably when we do get it, um, it's not, qu it never seems quite as great as we thought it would be or, or else uh, suddenly it's, it's, uh, it's, it's gone out of date. There's a new model and we have to update to that or upgrade to that and so on. It, and uh, so when we do get something that makes us feel even temporarily satisfied, uh, we immediately, you know, even if, uh, you know, we say, oh, this is great, this is really what I wanted, then we have to start worrying about what happens if I lose it or someone steals it or, you know, uh, or how, uh, can I afford to keep it up, and all, whatever it is, you know, there's so many things. Our, our minds go round and round like that in this cycle of, of, of fear and loss and worry and anxiety and anger and all these kinds of emotions that constantly work to keep us from having a mind that is at peace and a mind that is um, appreciative of the moment of life we're actually living. So, um, and uh, you know, that, that applies to, um, you know, all intangible things as well. And, you know, as I mentioned about the online world, you know, the looking for acceptance and attention uh, in that, f in that uh, world is also a, a, a inevitably becomes disappointing because you know, it, it's not, we have to find that acceptance within ourself. So um, even if, you know, you were successful in all these things, um, you have 
can get whatever, you can buy whatever you want, uh, you have all the status you want, all the acceptance, everything. Uh, our lives are still going to be full of dissatisfaction because there's still going to be old age, sickness, and death, which we cannot overcome. No matter what we do, no matter how clever we are, how much money you have, or wealth, or power, whatever it is, you cannot avoid those things, old age, sickness, and death. That's what the Buddha taught. Buddha said that if we let go of our attachments, we can attain a mind of peace, a mind that does not cling to illusions of happiness, but embraces everything and everyone equally with compassion and appreciation. That's hard for us ordinary beings to do because it's hard for us to overcome our selfish and restless mind. But Buddhism teaching, teaches that we can attain this peace of mind and that's because the mind of peace, the mind of enlightenment, is actually the Buddha's mind, which paradoxically is, is actually our true mind, your true mind. It's, it's your true self, my true self, uh, that we all share and we realize this the moment we begin, even in small ways, to rely on the Buddha's wisdom rather than our own. Then the Buddha's wisdom, the way things really are, the mind of great compassion, the Buddha's light illumines the true nature of our living and transforms us so that we are able to embrace each moment, whether you are happy or unhappy, whether that moment is happy, happy or an unhappy moment, um, equally. You feel good, you don't feel good, doesn't matter. We embrace every aspect of life equally and then we begin to see everything in a new light that same light the Buddha's light without judgment accepting the whole of life accepting each other everyone around us and accepting ourself so thank you very much uh, for listening today just a few thoughts to um, to, to reflect on and uh, please join me now with our hands together as we recite the Buddha's name of the calling voice of great compassion. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.
Well, thank you very much for joining us again today for our Kahului Hanganji YouTube Sunday service. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, today's service and that uh, uh, something uh, was meaningful to you in in uh, in, in the uh, chanting or in the uh, Dharma message. So um, I don't have too many announcements. Thank thanks again to those who helped us with our our fundraiser, and we'll be having more of those. Uh, um, of, uh, 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 shortly, I think. Um, of course, we also uh, accept uh, donations by YouTube. You can find, uh, not, not YouTube, excuse me, by, um, uh, pay through PayPal, uh, um, or of course, just regular um, uh, checks and so on through the mail. But we are, um, you can find on our Kahului Honganji uh, website uh, a place to make donations by um, PayPal um, if you're interested. And um, uh, also, uh, we have the um, uh, Nembutsu Seminar at Wailuku Honganji Buddhist Temple, uh, and that it will be on November 13th and 14th. And um, the speaker will be Reverend Ken Fujimoto. You do have to register for that. Um, you can call Wailuku Honganji, but w we also have, because due to the COVID situation and the uncertainty and people's uh, sort of cautiousness about gathering in, in groups, it, it, it will be, of course, socially distanced and everything like that. But um, and and there, it's a big room uh, that they would have that in. But uh, many, but we are also uh, they're going to open it up to uh, uh, participation by Zoom as well. So um, you can also check on their uh, Wailuku Honganji Mission website, and I, I think you'll be able to register there. Okay, so thank you very much once again for joining us, and let's conclude our service now by putting our hands together in Gasho and reciting the Buddha's name, uh, the, the word, the calling voice of great compassion. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.